basically the upper extremity. Shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand. So we'll do shoulder and elbow first, then we'll do the break, and then we'll do uh, wrist and hand after that. If you have your midterms, and we can look at those after the break. So what are the bones that are involved in the shoulder joint? Fingers, scapula, what else? Um, okay. And what are the different joints of the shoulder? Femoral, what else? Cromioclavicular. Cromioclavicular. Is this one here? Oh, that's the uh, sternoclavicular. So those are the true structural joints. Then there's two functional joints that are part of that. Do you know what those are? Superhumeral? Yeah, superhumeral, or also called subacromial. And that's basically a, a space <coughs> that structures are going to pass through. We'll talk about that. And then there's another one between the scapulothoracic. So those are not true joints, they don't have carbon surfaces, but they do have articulations. And the scapula moves along the shoulder blade, I mean the rib cage. And then, actually, I'm, so there was a lot of different shoulder and elbow and hand and wrist movements going on in that, right? Okay, so now we'll talk about more specifically the different joints. Okay, so the primary one is going to be the glenohumeral joint. Okay, so that is the actual true shoulder joint. It has cartilage surfaces. It's between the humerus and the glenoid fossa. So I have my handy dandy little uh, arm model here. So this is supposed to be the scapula right here. And then here's the, what kind of joint is the glenohumeral joint? Ball and socket, right? So it's got a short little socket here, with, which is the glenoid labrum, right? You have the labrum that goes around and you have the glenoid fossa right there. Okay. So it's a ball and socket joint. And then, so we have this group one where first is the glenohumeral joint, then we have the superhumeral joint. So that's not a true joint, it's actually just a joint space. Okay. It's this passageway through which there's going to be certain tissues that are going to pass through. Primarily going to be the supraspinatus, long head of the biceps, and there's also a bursa in there, subchromial bursa. And then it's between the chromium, and then what's this process right here? Not the coronoid, it's the coracoid. coracoid. And then there's a ligament that goes across there which is the coracochromial arch. And that's more or less like the roof of the shoulder joint. And then you have the second group, which is around from there. You have the scapulothoracic joint. And that's, again, that's not really a true joint. It's where the scapula articulates with the rib cage. So it's not a cartilage line joint. It's a functional joint. And then you have the two joints on either end of the clavicle. Okay, so this is the chromioclavicular, and then this is what? Sternoclavicular. And if... Um, yes, yeah, group two is not on the Group two is not on Yeah, I know. I put that on the secure side, but if people didn't have time to get it off the secure side, then I can see what we can do maybe to... Uh, Oh, oh, so it's so it's modified. Oh, okay, that's what you're saying. <coughs> okay. All right. Well, we can just add that in then. So sorry about that. So we'll just. So okay. So in this case, we'll have to write something in. Okay. So basically, the second group is you have. Uh, the scapula thoracic, okay, that's between the scapula and the rib cage. Okay? Then you have the either end of the clavicle. So that would be sternoclavicular and the chromioclavicular. Okay? 
Okay, so there's one joint on either side of the clavicle. And does everybody remember which one of those has a, a disc in it? There's a clavicle disc at the sternoclavicular joint. Okay, so we got that? No, 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 no,